Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to another look at Alpha 24. Today we're going to be going over some of the biggest changes that you'll notice in terms of gameplay that have changed since Alpha 23 and what that means in practice. So let's get straight on and we'll look at the biggest five. Alpha 24 is the biggest shakeup that Zero AD has seen in many years. And for the first time, as long as most people can remember, it's not just going to be a bit of balancing that's happened. It's fundamental changes to the nature of the game. So that's why this video exists. And I'm going to take you through what I think are the top five most impactful and or surprising changes. And believe me, even those that have been studying the development of Alpha 24 are surprised by some of the final decisions and the impacts they're already having on the way the game is played. So let's dive in with number five. This will probably be the most noticeable difference in Alpha 24 as it applies to all factions. Unless of course you used to play as Persians, in which case nothing has changed for you. But basically all factions will now continue to train both citizen soldier cavalry and infantry from the Civic Centre, but cavalry and infantry will now be trained in separate buildings when trained elsewhere. So the barracks remains for infantry, while the stables is introduced for all the other factions uh, other than Persians that had it before. So this means you're going to need to be aware of the costs of both buildings for your chosen faction to make sure you can balance your economy well enough to sustain a population boom in the early game. So this is a, well, mostly new addition to your early game thinking that will need to be considered in relation to the map and other available resources if you're going to successfully get through the game. In at number four, we have something that's a bit of a nerf to heroes, but one that I completely agree with. And that is you can only train each hero once. This means that once you've trained them and they've been killed, it's game over for that hero. And once you've trained all three of your available heroes and seen them die, there's nowhere left to go. Your heroes are all over. Now, this is shown by the new description text on the icon that you'd use to train a hero. If they've been trained and have already died, then it will read, could only be trained once in bright red text. And if they're yet to be trained, then it will read, can only be trained once. And that will be in white text. You can still only have one hero at a time, but the days of repeatedly sending the same hero to the front line to take enemy fire while your army uses them as a human shield, well, those days are over. So time for a bit of added realism, and to be honest, it's not before time. Whereas for most factions in Alpha 23, you'd normally find your siege weapons and all your champions in the fortress, this is all over in Alpha 24. From now on, the fortress will only provide you with your heroes, and that's if it provides any training at all. As in some cases, where the heroes were already trained in either a specialist building or the civic centre, they've remained so. So this means that for some factions, the only thing a fortress will actually offer is the will to fight upgrade. So why don't we have a quick look at what's happened to those other units that were previously available from fortresses. Well, elephants have gone into a specialist elephant stable. This already existed for the Morians, but whereas Morians can still call on this building in Phase 2, for all other factions it's been moved to Phase 3, which is where they would have had access to elephants anyway. All factions also now have a siege workshop. This means that for every single faction, they can now train rams. And that's a massive difference, and it makes factions like the aforementioned Morians, as well as the Kushites, massively improved. And finally, in a huge change, champions will, in the vast majority of cases, be trained from the barracks or the stables. But in order for this to happen, you'll have to unlock them at a cost of 600 food for each. Now, as you can imagine, this is going to change things pretty fundamentally and means that you'll need a barracks and a stables at least once near the front line, as there'll be almost nothing that your fortress is now of doing. It's just a place to shelter and it no longer provides strong troops. Next up, we have bonuses and upgrades being massively overhauled, and this manifests in three main ways. The first is that your units will no longer get health boosts when you phase up. This used to be a really valuable bonus if you were engaged in early raiding, and it made phase two soldiers massively better than phase one soldiers. Now, however, your soldiers will all have the same stats in phase one as they do in phase two, so this advantage is now gone. Secondly, the 10% aura bonus for building and collecting resources that was available for citizen soldiers working within 10 meters of a female citizen is now defunct. This means it's game over for the 23 plus one rule on metal and stone mines, as you're just going to want citizen soldiers as they have greater speed at collecting these resources. And finally, in Alpha 23, and in fact as far back as I can remember, armor upgrades were always preferable to attack upgrades, as armor protected you against both hack and pierce, whereas you had to choose to buff either your melee or your range attack. Well, 
This is all over as now armor is split into hack and pierce options while you still can choose to buff either your range or melee troops. So there's no more prioritizing overall armor you're going to need to select based on what your enemy's strengths are. This makes the game a little more interesting as if you splash out on hack armor and your opponent has mostly ranged troops that tend to have higher pierce attack, you're going to be in trouble. This means knowing the tech trees of your opponent's faction so as to guess their probable approach has become incredibly important. Now in a quick change before we hit number one, I'm going to talk about a few things that didn't make the big list, but because they're all related to kind of individual units as opposed to being something that's about the whole game. So let's just quickly run through them now. So first up, archers have been buffed while slingers have been nerfed. And this means that archers now probably outplay slingers, which is a complete turnaround from where they were in Alpha 23. Um, catapults and bolt shooters have reduced pierce armor, so they can now be killed by archers or skirmishers. This means they're far less strong than they were in Alpha 23, and it's also another reason that archers are just great now. Elephants have been split into African and Indian elephant types, and the Indian ones are substantially better than the African ones, and that's something to bear in mind when you're picking your faction. Not all elephants are equal anymore. Um, and next one is cavalry and infantry have had their speeds harmonized a bit, so there's actually very little difference between similar types when you compare them to Alpha 23. And finally, all of your um, citizens can now build everything, rather than there being some things that only citizen soldiers can build, um, which was the case before, where you'd have to lay down foundations with a citizen soldier before sending your female citizens over to build it. That's now done. Okay, on to number one. And in at number one, in something that's completely fundamental, is that mercenaries are all change. Now, previously, the only difference between mercenaries and normal citizen soldiers was that 50% of the food cost was exchanged for metal. Well, not only has their cost breakdown changed dramatically in that they now cost 40% of the food and 60 metal for infantry and 80 for cavalry, but they also can't collect resources anymore. This means that phase one mercenaries are gone, presumably as this would have been just too much of a handicap. And this means the ability to train up phase one skirmishers using your phase one metal for Ptolemy's players is all over as their skirmisher has been replaced by a slinger. Now, this is a massive shakeup for Ptolemies, as we've already mentioned, but it's also a massive change for Macedonians, Carthaginians, and Seleucids as well, as these factions rely heavily on mercenaries to bolster their limited core units. So, overall, this is just a fundamentally huge impact. And that was the top five, plus an additional bonus five, differences between Alpha 23 and Alpha 24. There's going to be more of this type of video in the coming weeks as we're looking at the factions, the structure trees, techs, and more. So subscribe, click the bell, etc. if you want to be party to that information. And as always, I'll see you in a week. Obrigado e adeus. Ciao.